angels bow in adoration. We join them as we lift up a cry word. Lift up your voice, come on. Worthy is the Lamb. Sing it, come on. Angels bow in adoration. We join them as we lift up a cry word. Worthy is the Lamb. Wave your hands to Jesus. The angels, the angels bow in love and rage. We join them now as we cry with the Lamb. Yes, the Lamb of God is worthy. And so are all those that he calls to serve him in spirit and in truth. All of us need a divine hookup, a godsend. Naaman would have stayed a leper, but that young damsel that he captured and brought to be a maid to his wife was a godsend. She had a bit of information. When God sends people into your life, different ones sort out different problems in your life and mine. They may not be with us forever, but whatever it is that they have come to do, may it get done. Glory to God. I said last night, it is your responsibility to recognize that connection. It is not their responsibility to, to recognize you. I said that the person who God has sent to hook up with you, they may not even know that God sent them. And it'll take them years before they figure it out. Wow, you know, God sent me to this individual. David discerned Jonathan instantly. Jonathan discerned David instantly. Sometimes the connection is instant. I'm not talking about my spirit take him and my spirit take her. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God sending people into your life and sending you into people's life. You can be a connection to somebody, a divine connection. But you got self-esteem issues. Oh, I don't think I don't think the Lord will send me to anybody. Little old me. You're neither little nor old with your big self. You're nearly 300 pounds. What's little about you? What's old about you with your young self? And so... It may happen with someone that you have never met before. In Acts 8 and 31, Philip met this eunuch. Never met him before. And yet the two of them were going to make history. Mm. And then I close off by saying, some of the people that God has sent to be that connection to you, they only recognize it after years have passed. Remember that bottle and the baker? Joseph interpreted these guys' dreams. And the one that got out scratch free and got back his job and was back pressing wine for the king, he promptly forgot about Joseph. How do you do something like that? How can you forget the people that brought you solutions? How can you forget the people that brought you answers? How can you forget the people that brought you clarity? How can you forget the people that when you were in your bad times, they were there for you? How are you going to forget that? How are you going to pretend like you pull yourself up by your bootstraps? I just saw a name pass on the screen here. Uh, Rosalind, Rosalind Adams. <laughs> My house was broken and entered by thieves. They emptied it out. They left me with a container that you could buy kerosene oil. Some of you don't even know what that is. And uh, a butter knife. That's all she wrote. And they took me to their home and said, Rev, we're sorry for what happened. Look in our house here. And whatever you want, you take it and start back. Start from scratch. Hey, you, you can't forget something like that. You can't forget something like that. Hmm. 
Every time I think about that thing, tears come to my eyes. And I just got, you know, there are still good people in this world. That's the point. There are still good people in this world. And then remember, Paul had the nerve to tell Mark, I don't want nothing to do with you, your raggedy old self, your lazy, good for nothing, so and so. And he, you know, later on when he was in jail and wanted his parchment and his cloak and his, his, his whatever, Rosalind Broad Adams, yes, y'all say hi to Rosalind and tell her thanks for being there for the apostle back in the day of his dark, long, dark night of the soul. She's living in New York now. You need to meet her, Vonda, and say hi and, you know. Incidentally, she's got a testimony that make your hair stand on end. She was in the building when the plane crashed into it, and the building collapsed just after she got out. The guy who got her out died. In the, he was going for more people. And she is a testimony to the glory and praise of God that in spite of all of those people, and we are sorry, of course, but the Lord saved her life so she could go home and be a mother to her daughter. Now she's a grandmother to her daughter's child or children. I haven't been keeping in touch. Y'all say hi to her. Big her up, big her up. What a blessing. And she's a, she's a sweetheart. She loves the Lord. Back in those days, I tell her about the Lord. She just looked at me and smiled. <laughs> she just would not take me on for nothing. Oh, you and your Jesus. Yes, boom, you and your Jesus. I say, yes, you want me to do something else. But now she got more Jesus than me. <laughs> Look how the tables have turned. Sometimes I have to remind her, yo, yo, hey, hey, quiet, quiet. I'm the preacher here. <laughs> Now she's saved to the bone and she would not leave Jesus alone. Oh, glory to God. I said that the, the hookup, the divine connection, that they may be nameless, faceless, and powerless like this young girl. And then your connection may be opposed by jealous people. You always got jealous people. That wouldn't stop. You always got good people too. That too wouldn't stop. But sometimes we put up with the bad ones so much. We get fed up with humanity. And one man said, I'm so tired with people. I'll get me a dog. <laughs> it was a sad state of affairs. He's gone to the dogs now. He's not dealing with human beings. The connection that God will send. He's sending them for a reason. Sometimes for a season. He's sending them to complete his plan in your life. To complete his plan. God has planned your future. God has planned your future. And he links you with those who will help you make the changes to get to your future. The butler had a plan that would link Joseph to Pharaoh in the palace. And Pharaoh would get the answers he was looking for. And the lives of the people of Egypt and all the surrounding nations would be saved because of a divine connection. There are many people whose salvation is dependent on you and somebody getting together. When I meet people from other countries, I, I start to put on all my antennas. I don't have antennas, but you know what I mean. Because I'm wondering, does God want me to go to this country? Does God want me to hook up with this person because... Of a call to that country. There's somebody there that needs my style of preaching. Now everybody's not going to like my style of preaching. But some people cannot get to the Lord. Unless I am the preacher that, that they hear. There is something about the way I deliver what I deliver. That will cause that particular person to get saved. Everybody will not get saved. Another preacher will come and have greater results. Than I would ever have dreamt of. But I'm not jealous of him. Because that one that the Lord will touch, that one that God saved when I preach, they're going to shake a continent. Oh yes. Anytime I see one person come to the altar call, I say to myself, boy, you got a world shaker here. How do you know? I know. I know. I'm heavy duty equipment. God had to bring me to get that diamond out. So it's got to be a diamond. God doesn't send me to a place to, you know, these little insignificant ningi ningis. Anyway, I know what God does. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Your connection with that person may affect the survival of an entire nation. Queen Esther was connected to Mordecai, connected to King Ahasuerus, and she prevented the pompous Haman from killing off the Jews and just preventing Jesus from coming. Oh yes, glory to God. I don't know when I'm going to the Philippines, but I know I'm going to the Philippines, Kiara, because every time myself and wife are going out, Filipino people will come over and start talking to her in the Filipino language. And she's looking at them and they say, you're not, you're not Filipino? And she said, no, I'm not Filipino. <laughs> they said, well, you look like a Filipino. I said, okay, that's a sign. I'm taking that as a sign that God wants me in the Philippines. In fact, I was supposed to go there one time and uh, something went wrong. Something went wrong with the preacher. Oh, he was, he, he was going there because there was big money that they were going to pay the preacher and uh, he couldn't preach like me, so he wanted me to do the preaching and he would get the big money. And when he started mentioning big money, the way he was carrying on, I said, man, I don't think the Lord wants me there because I'm not preaching for no big money or small money or any money. I'm preaching for souls. And he was, he was offended. He got somebody else and powers to both of them. But that's not my purpose of going to preach. I need some souls that come to the kingdom of God and come to know Jesus Christ. Glory to God. All right. I said last night also that uh, the connection will affect the survival of a nation. All right. That was said. And I said they will usher in a new generation of champions, heavyweights. Watch your life between now and the ending of the year and watch the people that will come into your life between now and the ending of the year. They are coming in to introduce you to champions. You can't say that. I just did. Champions. You will not stand before mean men. You stand before kings, presidents, prime ministers, sheiks, business people who need a word from God. Glory. There's a certain nation I go to and there's a billionaire there with a B and if they hear I'm in a country, they search until they find me or they send people. Hunt him down and bring him here. They want a prayer. Say a prayer. They get the people that work with them. Come quick. Let him pray over you. Put hands on that one. I think she got a demon. <laughs> and sometimes she do got a demon. <laughs> Glory to God. God will put you in the presence of great people. Great people. And sometimes he will put people in the presence of great you. He said, oh, Rev, I'm not great. That's what you were saying, but I'm saying differently. There's greatness in you. At least that's what Les Brown says. Yes. When Ruth met Naomi, <coughs> Naomi introduced her to Boaz. Boaz and Ruth got a son named Obed. Obed got a son named Jesse. Jesse got a son named David. David got sons, Solomon, Rehoboam, Jeroboam. David, Solomon, Rehoboam, and Jeroboam were all kings. And from the loins of a Moabitish damsel, God produced Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Out of the loins of this nobody, God was going to raise up all of the greatest champions of Israel. To root the Moabites. A lot of church people will not be happy with what will happen in this season of ministry because a lot of the people would not have gone to their Bible school, to their Bible college, to their seminary. They just rise up, it seems like, out of the bushes. But they are going to be heavily anointed. S supernatural wisdom, evangelistic power and a lot of them will have twin gifts like they will not just be an apostle they'll be an apostle prophet or a prophet teacher or a pastor evangelist god is going to do some freaky things in this end time when it used to be apostle prophet pastor teacher evangelist one person would be carrying two minimum two of the Ascension gifts, two of the fivefold ministry, or three for that matter. 
There are going to be some rare species of ministers that are coming up. And some of them are as young as 12. 12 year old you're talking about? Yes, 12. And God will use them in such a way. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Mark my words. Mark my words that we are going to see the dead raised and people breaking out in revival in the public street, in the street, not in the church, in the street, in the marketplace, in the mall. They'd have to pause and shut things down because the glory of God just visited a marketplace, visited Walmart. The power of God just sweeping through the place. People started singing and worship. And turn the business place into a worship center for that moment in time when the kabod, the glory of God, come. Hey, 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 hey. That's one of those going into the future and coming back with information. That piece of information I got from the future. Yes, yes. It's gonna happen. I have no, no work. I'm not worried about that. You worried? Oh, raise the dead? That's impossible. <laughs> God's dictionary, I searched it out. I never saw the word impossible. A new generation of champions are going to come out of the connection that God will make with you. And sometimes your children are going to be the champions. You don't see them as that now. These little brats, they eat everything and making a lot of noise and mess. They make so much laundry. I can't believe it's one child got so much clothes. But that's the one that God will use and shake the world. These are nation shakers, world shakers. They are not church shakers. They are bigger than that. It's going to happen. I, I know a lot of times your people say, here he goes with his false prophecy again. But the thing is, when the thing happens, they don't, come, they don't call me and say, Rev, you know, that thing that you said come to pass. And then I will tell them, all right. Send me some assistance up here. Send, send a good offering for that one. They, they start laughing. They quickly put on the phone. They want the food at the restaurant, but they don't want to pay for it. A new generation of champions of God will come out of the connection that God will make with you. November, December of 2021. Now here's one you've got to look at. and You've got to be careful with this one. And a lot of you, I can say unapologetically that you were not careful with this one. And you chased away one of the greatest blessings that God had sent to you. You chased them away. You chased them away with your attitude. And sometimes you chase them away because of their attitude. Are you still there? So here I go. Some connections are burdensome, irritating, and difficult to get along with. Some connections are burdensome, irritating, obnoxious, bossy, difficult to get along with. But they are a connection. God sent them to you. Look at this butler. The guy just gave him the right message, interpreted his dream, and he got out and promptly forgot the man who got him out. Doesn't that irritate you when people are unthankful? It's irritating to deal with unthankful people. They only come and seem to have a radar to know when the blessing is there. They come and they soak up that blessing and they're gone. You don't see nor hear from them for the next 10 years. And when they come return, it's to soak up another blessing that's passing through in your house. And they're gone. You don't see them again. It's very irritating to deal with the butler type people. The unthankful, the ungrateful. Glory to God. Ruth was making every effort to get to Naomi's country and Naomi was doing everything in her power to drive Ruth away 
Go back with your sister-in-law. Go back to your country. Go back to your family. Don't follow me. I am Naomi. But now, my name is Mara. Because the Lord had dealt bitterly with me. It wasn't the Lord. The Lord didn't send her there. She went of her own free will. Went to Moab and things went wrong. She left Jerusalem, the house of bread, to go to Moab. Bethlehem, sorry. The house of bread. Sometimes the connection that God sends. The person doesn't have the personality that rubs you the right way. The person that God sends, they are not I can be. The person that God sends as a divine connection, they smell. They have body odor. The person that God sends, they have halitosis. <sighs> Bad breath. <laughs> and God sent them to you. They dress like a masquerade. They look like a clown. But God sent them to you. God can be very scandalous at times. He sent you some of the ragtag, ragamuffin type people. Like what in God's name is going on here? Where did they find that from? Look what the cat dragged in. Sometimes people come and say, you know, Rev, the Lord, the Lord told me that you must work with me and I must work with you. The Lord told me. I take one look at them and I say to myself, Lord have mercy. Just, just the outward appearance. You can, you can see sheer trouble and drama coming your way. If you dare say yes to this thing I'm a jig that is telling you the Lord sent him. <laughs> and there are some, oh my dear God, they pluck your last nerve. Sometimes you want to get a gun and shoot them and tell God, God, it was a drive-by. <laughs> but you know God knows all things. So you can't pass that one on. Some people you literally want to snatch them by the throat and squeeze. They are disgusting. They are obnoxious. They are opinionated. They are full of themselves. They are full of themselves. They are full of themselves. And the Lord sent them to work with you and you to work with them. And nine out of ten times, the Lord did send them. <laughs> because I go to the Lord and say, Lord, and sometimes the, the minute I say Lord, he says, don't even bother. I did send them. End of story. Okay, are we going to have a conversation now? And he's gone. Don't even bother. All I say is, Lord, uh, he knows I'm coming to inquire about this person as to whether it's true or not that he sent them. He said, don't even bother. I sent them. You work with them. <laughs> and he's gone. What's the salary? <laughs> he never talked to me about no salary. He just work with them. And some of these folks, they, 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 instead of you working with them, they're working on you. And when they get done with you, you mellow. You mellow, mellow, mellow. You were not mellow before. You were acidic before. But now, you're mellowed, you're chilled, you're nicer to get along with. What happened to you, Rev? That person worked on my last nerve. I don't have no nerves like that left. So now I'm a nicer person because of them. Some of your connection, they will be irritating Difficult to deal with, burdensome, ill-dressed, broke, unskilled, jobless, some homeless. I had some people the Lord sent my way, and they said, Rev, the Lord sent me to you. I got nowhere else to go. I'll stay for a week or two. And three years later, they left. <laughs> Four years later, they left. <laughs> Some of them didn't leave until they got married. That's when they left. Oh, Lord, our help in ages past or hope for years to come. But God did honestly send them. 
They had nowhere else to go. So the Lord has chosen me. Lord, please choose somebody else. God will often confirm that he has sent them. The servant of Abraham asked for confirmation from God. I want a wife for Isaac. Let it come to pass that the girl that I shall see, let down thy picture and give me a drink. That she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels also. You know, I know, we know, we all know, that camels don't drink one and two gallons. Camels drink a lot of gallons. And for you to have that picture on your head and take it off your head, put it on the ground for the camels to get enough to drink, it's a lot of water we're talking about. It will call for at least an hour of hard labor. And when you are a damsel, a girl, unmarried, with all your soft skin and soft whatever, to have to deal with a camel and this man that you don't know. And yet that's what he prayed for. And when Rebecca came, he said, Let it be let the same be she that you have appointed as a wife for thy servant Isaac. And thereby I will know that you have showed kindness to my master. Genesis 24 and 14. And to, to the T, when he asked his girl for the water, she lighted off the animal that she was on and began to run to get water to him and to his camels. And he said to himself, that's her. That is her. That's the one. That is the one. My goodness, look at how she's moving. Look at how she flies. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Supergirl. No, it's Rebecca, actually. <laughs> and her work ethic and her hospitality was of such that she would become the wife of Isaac and inherit all of the blessings of Abraham who was very rich in cattle, in silver, in gold, in men servants, maid servants. The man had an army that he could muster at any given point in time. That's rich. Glory to God. And so sometimes God will confirm that I did send them. And I want you to work with them. You have what it takes to work with this one. The next one I'll send to somebody else. Are you there? Now usually, usually, you may be in a crisis and that connection sorts out the crisis. They solve the problem. Haman had a plan to decimate the Jews. And God used Esther as the connection to solve the crisis. Her boldness and her presentation to the king gave the Jews the right to defend themselves. One woman was going to shake up 127 provinces twice. She shook it up when she won the beauty pageant. And she shook it up again when she got the confidence of the king to give the Jews a right to fight for themselves. The woman was a shaker. You women out there, you're not just a pretty shape and a pretty face. You're a shaker, a kingdom shaker. 127 provinces can come under your influence. What are you talking about, girlfriend? Glory to God. You're not just there to have the weave and the nails. And for God's sake, stop with these six-inch nails and three-inch nails. You know, we know you, you got to get your little nails and stuff, but keep it, keep it, you know, keep it manageable. Glory to God. Glory to God. Esther was used by God to sort out an international crisis. <sighs> what crisis are you to sort out? Now listen. Sometimes the connection that God sends your way, hmm, they have come into your life to make you do something that you have never done before. I'm not talking about something illegal now. Without Mordecai as our connection, Esther would never have gone to see the king. She could have been destroyed herself through Haman's horrifying plan and hatred. Mordecai demanded that she approach the king. Even though she was uninvited. She did so. She went to see the king, Esther 4 and 8, and she was saved. Your connection may require you to do something you've never done. Her connection was her uncle Mordecai. And uncle Mordi said, go talk to the king. Who knows whether God has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. And if you don't do it, 
enlargement and assistance will come from somewhere else, but you and your father's house will be slain. If you don't do it, you're going to die. He wasn't trying to be a, a fear monger. He was just calling it like he saw it. I don't like when I see death for people. I don't like when I see crisis in a nation. I, I rather carry good news. But sometimes, that's what the Lord's got for them. You've got to just deliver the package. You're just the postman. You're not the writer and author of everything. They may require you to do something difficult, something hard. And Esther was going to do something hard. Yes. Yes. God was going to use her to stop a tragedy in the life of the Jewish people. God will use you to stop tragedies in the lives of many people. You are a tragedy stopper. Now the connection that God sends may be the total opposite of you. You may be an extrovert, they may be an introvert. You may love to laugh, they may be as serious as a heart attack. Goliath was the link between David and Saul. Naomi was the link between Ruth and Boaz. Philip was the link between the Ethiopian eunuch and God. God often sends people into our lives that are completely opposite to us to become that chain, that link to the next season. Your connection is a link to your next season. When you see that person arrive, it is an announcement from God that a new season is here. That connection is an announcement of a new season. Don't stay the same. Start, start looking around for changes. Start looking around for things to happen, things to be fast-tracked. Start looking around for movement and kingdom speed. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't just take it as just another thing happening. Something major has just happened when you got this connection. They may come into your life to expose a flaw or to reveal a mistake that you're making. Jonah was sent to reveal the flaw of Nineveh. Tragedy was averted when they listened to Jonah. In Jonah 3 and 2, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. God sees more than your mistakes. He sees your greatness. He sees your future. Nineveh had sinned terribly against God. And yet God called Nineveh that great city. Don't worry, people. If the Lord does not burn this nation, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they wouldn't stop. They wouldn't stop. I have one of those Sodom and Gomorrah preachers in my life, and every he's got to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. Invited him to preach on Father's Day, and he's into Sodom and Gomorrah, and wouldn't stop. I had warned him, don't bring in no Sodom and Gomorrah. Today is Father's Day. We're not talking about no Sodom and Gomorrah. And do you know, within... <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to know what became of him, ask Reverend Vonda Gaspar. She would tell you, and whatever she tells you is true. And I didn't tell her what to tell you, but she knows what time it is. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jonah showed Nineveh their mistake. Now I'm issuing a warning now before I leave this subject off. Hear me and hear me strong. Mm. Any connection that God sends to you, when that connection is disrespected, disregarded, mistreated, or shown that funky attitude that you know exactly what I'm talking about, God would cut that link with you. They will exit your life. Paul spoke to one place for three months concerning the kingdom of God. And the Bible says some became hardened. They spoke evil against him and his teaching. And God moved him away from them. In Acts chapter 19 verse 19, a very tragic piece of statement I read. But when diverse, different ones of them, were hardened and believed not, he departed from them. Paul departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Acts 19.9. When they believed not and were hardened, 
Paul departed from them. Don't cast your pearls before pigs. Pigs don't know the value of pearls. And there are some people that are very piggy. No matter the grace, no matter the soft approach, no matter the soft sell, no matter the anointing, no matter the miracle, they still want to be wicked. And such people should be left to their own devices. Because the more truth you give to them, the more whippings they will get. Because to whom much is given, much will be required. So God will require more of them just because they have met you and they know the gospel. So do not give them so much gospel because you are heaping coals of fire on their head. Just depart in peace. They have gotten the gospel already. Somebody else may hear it the first time and get converted. And this joker has heard it 20 times and they are still more mean to you than anything else. One of the saddest lessons of ministry is that you come and meet some people as they are and you've got to go and leave them as they are because they do not want to change. And instead of them turning to the Lord, they are fighting you with all their might. You've got to know when to go and leave some people. It's always sad though. It's always sad. When God sends a connection, He is creating change that will benefit you. He's creating a change for you that will benefit you every time. Even when that connection plucks your nerves. Ministers of the gospel are connections to changes. Parents are connections to growth. Bosses are connections to provision. Each of them bring a different thing to the table. When you recognize the connection, when you recognize a connection, it is one of the greatest secrets of increase that the world has ever known. That one right person can come into your life and they can fix everything that is wrong. Ministers are connections that bring change. Bosses are connections that bring provision. Stop cursing your boss. You got a paycheck coming in the weekend, the fortnight, the month end, whatever. May God send to you the right one or two. May God send them to you. May God give you what the people in the street call divine hookups. May the right man come into your life. He's not looking for a girlfriend. He's looking for a wife. May the right woman come into your life. You need help. And she has all the help in her that God can ever give to a man. May the one come into your life that has the right idea that will get your business in to the hemisphere, stratosphere, biosphere, whatever sphere, and take it to the heights it has never been before. May the right one come into your life and sort out some of your rebellious children for you and not even break a sweat doing it because they have the grace from God and the anointing to make that happen. May the right one come into your church and cause an exponential growth to the degree that you have to shout unto God with a voice of triumph and ask yourself, what was I doing wrong? How could this person come and so quickly make all of this happen and I couldn't get it to happen? Yes, yes. In dealing with this subject, there is something I need to leave with you. There is a man for a place and a place for a man. There are some places that you will work yourself to the bone and you will not see massive success. And other places, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. This nation that I'm living in has been like a, a crucible. It has been like a an oven. It has been like a furnace heated seven times hotter. It has been like Daniel in the lion's den. It has been like Jonah in the belly of the fish. It has been trying. And when you look around, the, the quantitative blessing that should have been afforded you given 
all that you have put in and invested in this thing. It's not there. And yet for all, the caliber of the people, the quality of the people is of such that others who are having bigger ministry, they would ask, some of them have the nerve to beg, can you send me two of these people? Just two. Can you send me one of these people? Just one. Can you send the worship leaders to come at us? Just for the, the next month. Let them put something into our church. Let them impart. They see it. They see the they see the the high caliber and quality of people that we have. To the glory of God. Some days I just sit there and smile to myself, boy. But you know, humanly speaking, you want to see the, the big spread, the plenty. And then what you see is the little spread, the quality. But when I leave and go out on my evangelistic trips, I don't call home to find out how is this, how is that, what is this, where is that, who is that, what is that. How was the sermon? Did it go well? I can sleep like a log because I know that the people and sometimes they have better services when I'm gone than when I'm here. <laughs> Last time I was out they had baptism. <laughs> well I had returned but I was in um, quarantine for two weeks. They went ahead with their baptism to the glory of God. How many churches you know have eight ministers that are able and capable and they bring it when they bring it? Eight, and that's just the top, top, top of the echelons. You got others that are there that they're smiling and pretending like they don't know to mash ants, but I know they can mash a rhinoceros's head. And so, you're going to make some connections this year. I said, what, it's November, it's just two months left. Well, you just listen to a brother. You will make some connections this year that are pivotal. You needed to hear this message so that you could prepare yourself so when people come into your life, you'll be able to assess them and stop with your big hips, your big mouth, and your big attitude, your big hand, your big face, and all the drama that you bring. You will now ask yourself when people come into your life, is this a divine connection? You'll not be quick to chase people away. Look, I need with people. I like to be by myself. This nonsense about I like to be by myself, you need to stop it. God wants you to have good relationships with people. Relationship is currency. It's currency. I'm not talking money now, but it's currency. Wherever you are right now, ask God to send your connections. Because for what you have to do, you need a few of them, not one, not two, quite a few. Jane R.S., Deborah Ross, Clarice McGarrell, and the rest of y'all. Look to God in prayer right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm having that. The baby has been given birth to. Now, you know, I feel like I've gotten the load off. This is my last night on this subject matter for now. May God send connections to you and to me too. May God send them. release in all of our lives divine connection male connection female connection business connection ministry connection health connections wealth connection Grace connections, gift connections, connections that affect change, 
Connections will take the burden off. Connections will learn. Connections will grow. Connections will bring provision. Mato Casa Rabia. Mandele Sakopa Casa Rabia. Siti Kebishu. of Jesus in the name of Jesus great are you Lord we got three minutes more before we hit eight o'clock let's enjoy this moment in time as we imbibe as we soak in connection on and before December the 31st. Pastor Ebeko Mo Pantarabaya. Yakamandarete. Pastor Kateko Kateko. Erebese. Hallelujah. Lord our God, the Almighty Reign. In the name of Jesus, release our connection. Release us to be the connection in the lives of your children. Let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. Scatter satanic ploys and plots and schemes. We lift your hands to you. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Set up divine connection to Team RF. Team RF, receive your divine connection. Let the Ross receive your divine connection. Wanda Gaspar, receive your divine connection. Yara Fabiana, receive your divine connection. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mika Baptist, receive your divine connection. Divine connection. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Maris Magara, receive your divine connection. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, man. In the name of Jesus. Mr. Simon, receive. Receive your divine connection. Receive it. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Brother Adam, receive your divine connection. In the name of Jesus, Rosin Braun, Abraham, receive your divine connection. In the name of Jesus, receive your divine connection. Receive your divine connection. Everyone that's on now, lift up your right hand and say, I receive. This is Griffith. Receive your divine connection. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Receive your divine connection now. In the 
the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Now we have 15 of those easy. Glory to God. The Lord bless you as you receive your divine connection. And as I receive mine. And the authority of Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say amen. God bless the boom is out.